is a thing which is not only occurring in the patients of the diabetes, but also there are certain conditions of the non-diabetes where also we can get the hypoglycemia. And that part had to be covered by Dr. Sandeep Rai. I hope he will join in time. In the meantime, I shall be telling you for the context setting that what is the status of hypoglycemia, what does the data say, and the biggest issues comes whenever the hypoglycemia is there, that is the recognition of the hypoglycemia. We all know that hypoglycemia is a, a thing, if it is not controlled, it can lead to the very adverse situation, it can lead to the uh, bad outcomes, but how to recognize, and uh, after this, my friend Dr. Amit Gupta shall be talking about hypoglycemia unawareness. That is again a very uh, interesting issue to be resolved. So let's come up with the recognition and significance of hypoglycemia in type 2 diabetes mellitus. Although we know that recognition of uh, hypoglycemia and significance of the hypoglycemia is well established in the type 1 diabetes. And many a times we tell the type 1 diabetes patient without glucometer you cannot survive. But is it really true for the type 2 diabetes patient also? So no conflict of interest regarding this talk. So I shall be covering recognition of hypoglycemia. Then I shall be taking you on the burden and significance of the hypoglycemia and finally factors affecting the rate of hypoglycemia. So when we talk about the hypoglycemia, it's, uh, why not is coming on the full screen? Yes, it's coming now. So once we talk about the hypoglycemia, there are multiple stages of the hypoglycemia and multiple uh, uh, things of the hypoglycemia, what we need to understand about that. So first of all, what we call the severe hypoglycemia, what is that? Severe hypoglycemia is an event that is requiring the assistance of the another person to actively administer carbohydrate or glucagon or other resuscitation action. Plasma glucose measurements may not be available in such situation and many of the time neurological recovery is attributable to the restoration of the plasma glucose to normal. So once you are coming across the patient and patient comes to you, he says only that he has been uh, fainted, somehow we could be able to give the glucose. We have given the glucose intravenously or somebody very intelligent or doctor is there, he can say that we have given glucagon subcutaneously and he has been alerted again. So in such situation, nobody could remember to measure the blood glucose level through the glucometer most of the time. And we don't get any documentation of these kinds of the situation. Another one is the asymptomatic hypoglycemia in which an event not accompanied by typical symptoms of the hypoglycemia but with a measured plasma glucose concentration which is in the hypoglycemia limit. That is currently is 70 milligram per deciliter but actually the symptoms of the hypoglycemia arises once the, uh, once the uh, glucose level comes down 54 milligram per deciliter. So it's always to remember the symptoms, neurological symptoms and other symptoms arises beyond this limit. But International Diabetes Association, International Diabetes Federation as well as American Diabetes Association has fixed up the cutoff for the hypoglycemia at 70 milligram per deciliter. Now we are having a lot of anti-diabetic agent which can keep your patients well controlled without having hypoglycemia. So this cutoff has been increased to make the better quality of life in the patients of the diabetes. Now we should come up to the documented severe hypoglycemia. I think asymptomatic hypoglycemia includes that category of hypoglycemia what the Amit is going to talk in which we face the hypoglycemia unawareness. Documented severe hypoglycemia is that an event during which typical symptoms of the hypoglycemia are accompanied by a measured plasma glucose concentration that is less than 70. Probable symptomatic hypoglycemia, an event during which symptoms typical of hypoglycemia are not accompanied by a plasma glucose determination, but that was presumably caused by a plasma glucose concentration less than 70. 
and relative hypoglycemia is that an event during which the person with diabetes reports any of the typical symptoms of hypoglycemia and interprets those as indicative of hypoglycemia with a measured plasma glucose concentration more than 70 milligram per deciliter but approaching towards the lower of the 70. So many of the times those people facing this situation, those who are keeping their glucose more than 200 or 250 or sometimes they are keeping in the habit of the hyperglycemia, once you try to bring them and they are not reached to the 70 even at the 80 or 90, but they start feeling the uh, they start feeling the hypoglycemia, they start getting the symptoms of the hypoglycemia, but it indicates they are reaching towards the 70 milligram per deciliter that is called as relative hypoglycemia. So what the symptoms people face is, there are the two categories of the symptoms, one is the neurogenic symptoms which is caused by the falling glucose level and another category of the neuroglycopenic symptom which is caused by the brain neuronal glucose deprivation. So first category of the symptoms that is caused by the falling glucose level is the shakiness, trembling, anxiety, nervousness, palpitation, clumsiness, sweating, dry mouth, hunger, pallor, pupil dilatation. On the other hand, the symptoms which are being caused by the deficiency of the glucose in the brain, which are caused by brain neuronal glucose deprivation are the abnormal mentation, irritability, confusion, difficulty in thinking, difficulty in speaking, ataxia, paresthesia, headaches, stupor, seizures, coma, and sometime if not treated well, then death also may occur. So hypoglycemia risk factors are ma majorly well known to us that if we miss or delay the meal but take the medication for the diabetes in the diabetic patient, eating less food as it's supposed to be what frequently happens in the elderly individual and especially in the children, those who are diabetic. Vigorous exercise without carbohydrate compensation. Taking too much diabetes medicine, sometimes more than required. Drinking alcohol, that is one of the very important reasons of hypoglycemia. But there are certain limitations. Because of what we do not identify hypoglycemia cases as they are there. Like the clarity of the definition is not there. Many of the organizations, those who are giving the definition of hypoglycemia, they are not having a consensus. Like ADA says if the blood glucose level goes lesser than 70 milligram per deciliter, then it is a glucose alert value. And clinically important hypoglycemia is supposed to be the less than 54 milligram per deciliter, I as said you earlier. And severe hypoglycemia, they don't give any specific glucose threshold. The same thing is supported by the IHSG. IDF is also saying almost the same thing, but little different way. IDF says that glucose alert value ranges between 54 to 70 milligram per deciliter. But if it is going less than 54, then it is clinically important. Again, it is silent for the severe hypoglycemia. ACE, American Association of the Clinical Endocrinology, says less than 70 should be glucose alert value for the hypoglycemia. It remains silent about the clinically important hypoglycemia, but severe hypoglycemia is defined by the ACE if it is required the assistance from the another person. Many organizations, including our RSSDI, are silent about the definition of hypoglycemia, especially regarding the cutoff value for the hypoglycemia. So in that way, we face this kind of the non-agreement or non not available consensus for the hypoglycemia definition because of what many people do not identify it many times diagnosis is missed. And mostly it is the recollection by the patient memory which contribute the data of the hypoglycemia. And many of the time, once the recollection is not properly done by the patient, patient is not being able to recollect properly the event, what has occurred of the hypoglycemia, it remains with the under-reporting. So limitations in the hypoglycemia detections, once we talk about, 47% of the patient had unrecognized hypoglycemia detected by continuous glucose monitoring. And 83% of hypoglycemic events detected by 
continuous glucose monitoring, they were usually unrecognized by the patient. So you can say that uh, how many events of the hypoglycemia are really being missed by patients as well as by the clinician. Similarly, what we see that proportion detected by the continuous glucose monitoring is over 49% overall and only 10% the severe. The same is, has been another study which has been done by the HAT. Has, the difference was not very much, almost similar. 47% overall hypoglycemia could be detected and 9% severe hypoglycemia could be detected. So limitations lies in the lack of reporting, limitations lies in the incorrect or missing diagnosis, not having a consensus for the cutoff for the hypoglycemia, coding in the medical records and many a times difficulties in analyzing the reported events. As far as the clinical trials are concerned, many of the clinical trials who report the hypoglycemia, it's always under reporting because they exclude the patient at high risk of the hypoglycemic events exclude the patients with the hypoglycemia unawareness many of the time, and length of the trial is too short to accurately record even. The rates of hypoglycemia are higher in the general diabetes population compared with the rates from clinical trials. So actually, the real world evidences are more important as far as the hypoglycemia is concerned. Another important thing, another important issue regarding the under-reporting of the hypoglycemia is the inertia of the clinicians. Many of the time, clinicians also remain, remain reluctant about the hypoglycemia. Many a time, they do not ask about the hypoglycemia to his patient, and many of the times, patient is not being informed about the signs and symptoms of the hypoglycemia. Many a times, clinicians do not talk about the hypoglycemia because they always remain scared that patient may not leave the medication listening about the hypoglycemia. So this uh, scare, uh, scare always causes, uh, this fear always causes a difficulty in optimum management of the hypoglycemia as well as optimum data, data record of the hypoglycemia. <laughs> so let's talk about the burden and significance of the hypoglycemia. is a major barrier to improving the glucose control. Many patients modify their insulin dose following a hypoglycemic event, and many patients leave the insulin after the hypoglycemic event. That's why people do not talk about, that's why people try that not to give any medication which may lead to hypoglycemia, and that also remains one of the important reasons not keeping very good control of many of the diabetes patients. Many physicians would treat patients more aggressively if there was no concern about the hypoglycemia. It has been admitted by 72% primary care physician and 79% of the diabetes specialists. So achieving glycemic control is often a challenge. Balancing between of the glycemic control and risk of hypoglycemia, always there which is to be balanced by a clinician because always we strive for a good glycemic control to reduce the uh, complication rates, improving the health quality of life as well as decreasing the health care cost. But on the other hand, if the patient meets to the hypoglycemia, everything goes in, goes, goes in vain. Once the patient meets the hypoglycemia, then again we get the patient's quality of life is going down. Patient says, once I am getting this much of the symptoms, why, what is the use of taking all these medications? Let's stop all these medications. These medications are not good for me. And they, when he goes to the another doctor, he says Im immediately before the starting of the treatment, doctor, don't give me this medication because this medication does not suit me. He does not know that this is the action of the medication. It is not like that this medicine is not suiting him. So compromised glycemic control is the result of the frequent hypoglycemia. Increased complication, cost is again is increased and quality life of life is going down. And this is, can be reduced, this can be reduced by the use of the modern medications which have been introduced in last 10 to 15 years through which we can reduce the incidence of hypoglycemia. In, in fact, these modern medications are supposed to be almost free from the hypoglycemia. But I can tell you uh, one, one or two of my uh, own experiences. In the patients we were giving the gliflozin and uh, gliptins, they have also come up with the glucose level 65 or sometimes 60 or sometimes uh, less than 60 also. Although 
I did not see any of the patient those who, whom I am giving the uh, gliptin or gliflozin less than 54, but frequently I am seeing between 54 to 70. Once the cutoff is being followed by the 70, then I should consider it, they are going into the hypoglycemia. So this is the impact on the budget as well as on the quality of life. Relation between HbA1c and hypoglycemia, if we see that lower the HbA1c, more the hypoglycemia. As much as we are striving for a good control, as much as we are striving for the tight glycemic achievement, then we are more leading towards the incidences of the hypoglycemia. A continuous curvilinear relation between glycemic control and incidence of hypoglycemia has been observed in the DCCT trial. Prevalence of the severe hypoglycemia in type 2 diabetes with more than five years of the insulin use resembles almost same as the type 1 diabetes. So if a person is keeping on the insulin for at least five years, he starts behaving like a type 1 diabetes patient as regard of the hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia incidence, prevalence as well as hypoglycemia occurrence becomes the similar like the type 1 patient. The so total burden of the hypoglycemia is much higher in type 2 diabetes patient because number is very high. Total Hypoglycemia is the most common and most serious complications of diabetes treatment, contributes to mortality through the cardiovascular risk. We usually try to treat the diabetes for the avoidance of the cardiovascular adverse outcome, but if the treatment leads to the cardiovascular adverse outcome through the hypoglycemia, it again raises a concern for the treatment. For many patients and their families, hypoglycemia it is the most feared aspect of the diabetes treatment. They are more worried and more concerned about the hypoglycemia instead of the effect of treatment, instead of the reducing their hyperglycemia and reducing the concept that if you will keep your glucose level at the optimum, then you will not get the complications in your later life. So whenever you ask the patient, keep less than 100 your fasting plasma glucose, he always tries to keep it 110 or 115. He never tries to go less than 100. Some people purposefully keep the uh, above 100, although they may not go. So if they think that if it is going to beyond 100, probably they may be more on more risk of the hypoglycemia. The fear of hypoglycemia may compromise good diabetes control and at the same time, important factor for glycemic variability also. Now the glycemic variability has been identified. Uh, another important uh, factor for the cardiovascular adverse outcome. A number of patients you must have seen, they are coming with good HbA1c control. They are having the HbA1c 6 or 6.5 or sometimes less than 7, but they are found in the ICU with the heart attack. So they are those patients, those who are, although keeping their HbA1c in the target range, but they are not meeting the glucose uh, variability at the lowest level. They are keeping the high glucose variability. There is a lack of understanding by both healthcare professional as well as in the patient. A better understanding can increase patient outcome and quality of life. So with these words, I will also uh, uh, invite all the people, those who are sitting here, because many of the students I can see here, you are the medical students and you are being offered the free of cost membership the American College of Physicians. So you can go to the site of the American College of Physicians that is www.acponline.org, get yourself registered as a medical student. You are being offered free of cost registration, uh, free of cost membership. And after that you can get the free of cost virtual registration for the annual conference of our India chapter and lot of other evidence, uh, other uh, benefits you can achieve and lot of uh, information, lot of literature you can get from your uh, site of the American College of Physicians. So please do that. So without wasting much time, thank you very much.